And then some people say, oh, you don't have to actually say anything, or you don't have to confess or call on the name of the Lord or ask to be saved. There's all these stupid idiots online that will say that praying is a work. Some idiot called Jack Smack on YouTube, he's pretty popular out there. Some idiot saying, I'm teaching a total work salvation for saying that the way you believe in Christ is by confession and by calling upon the name of the Lord. And there's other idiots online, Norm Diamante, which I've already preached against. And this guy needs to be preached against as much as possible because he's just such a downer on soul winning. If you have the right interpretation of Acts 22, 16, you cannot believe the stupidity that calling on the name of the Lord isn't necessary for salvation or isn't the way you believe in Christ. Because it explicitly says it. Look at verse 16. And now why tarriest thou, this is Ananias speaking to Paul, arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Now, this is just clear, an example of the connection of salvation and calling on the name of the Lord. Why? Because be, washing away your sins is only a one-time event of believing in Christ. There's no other event that's going to wash away your sins. Some people say this, the new IFB invented the doctrine of calling on the name of the Lord to be saved. You're an idiot. And really, this only comes from YouTube and Bozo Internet land. People that don't really go soul winning. You know, I've never had that happen in real life. You know why? Because other, the people that I go out and preach the gospel and get saved are not idiots. These people are teaching a works-based salvation by adding confession and calling upon the name of the Lord as requirements for salvation. The sinner's prayer is biblical. Romans chapter 10, look at verse number 8. Romans 10, verse number 8, the Bible says, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. Now the Bible does not say, if thou shalt say with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. The Bible says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Because, you know, just by a mere word that does not say, but you have to confess before God. The word confess has to emphasize on profess, on your declaration before God. A lot of people will say your words don't really save you. But look at Romans 10, verse number 10. The Bible says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Let me read to you again. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So how is salvation obtained? By the mouth is obtained by your confession. Now, the Bible teaches that. You don't have to turn there. But the thief on the cross... The thief on the cross said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Now, he is not just saying a prayer. He's professing, he's acknowledging that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's able to save him. So the prayer does save you if you believe what you say. Because the Bible is clear. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. That's the part when you make it personal, when you truly believe on Christ, when you profess before God, when you are making it personal, not just acknowledging, believing in mere facts. Number four, the Bible teaches a heart-mouth connection. The Bible teaches a heart and mouth connection. The Bible, is, the Bible says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 15, the lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the foolish doeth not so. The Bible constantly connects your heart with your mouth. What you say usually indicates who you really are, what you really believe in. If somebody believes all the fact, and if they don't call upon the name of the Lord, we don't know if they are safe or not, right? Because they're just telling you the fact. But if somebody believes and they call upon the name of the Lord, they are saved. That's what the Bible says. If somebody don't believe and they call upon the name of the Lord, they are not saved. 
because the Bible teaches a heart and mouth connection. Now, the other objection uh, somebody will say uh, is asking or calling works. You are adding works to salvation. Now, the Bible says, aren't you just glad the Bible has answered you every question? Now, here's a story. The Samaritan woman. Then says the woman of Samaria unto him. He's talking to, she's talking to the Lord Jesus Christ. How is it that thou being a Jew, ask drink of me? which am a woman of Samaria, for the Jews have no dealing with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. So the, so, so, so the Lord Jesus Christ is telling that this woman, If you know the gift of God, this living water, if you ask him, he's going to give it to you. It's still a gift. She's not working for that. She's making it personal. See, you, you can believe this gift is real. You can, you can believe this gift is free, it's everlasting. If you don't make it your own, that's still not yours. You have to ask. You have to call upon the name of the Lord. You have to believe on Christ.